About 83% of you guys are not subscribed. Subscribing, clicking that like button, and commenting all help me out a lot in doing what I really want to do. Thank you guys so much for all your support. What is going on, guys? Rogue TCG here, here for another Yu Gi Oh! TCG deck profile. You all voted for it, so I am responding. Here is Tier Limit Skull Servants. Uh, unfortunately, um, with Skull Servants, I genuinely did try my best. I tried my absolute darndest to make a dedicated Skull Serpent strategy. Uh, however, given, um, the quality of card out of the Skull Servant archetype, um, that wasn't necessarily possible. Uh, sure, some of the new cards especially are incredible and literally try their absolute hardest to help the deck do anything. However, what they also do accomplish is they are incredibly good at card advantage and milling cards as well as putting extra bodies on board for link plays. Um, so I decided to slot them in to the previous tier limit light swarm brew that I built and swap up uh, some of the ratios just a little bit, uh, include some different uh, extract cards, and here we are. Here we are with tier limit light sworn uh, skull servant. So that's going to be enough yapping for me. I'm going to go through the card by card. I'm going to tell you what makes this deck tick, and uh, I'm going to give you my final thoughts at the very end. First off, we are on Triple Skull Servant, a skeletal ghost that isn't strong, but can mean trouble in large numbers, and by large numbers, we do have large numbers, we're playing 60 cards. We are on Triple White Lord, the main reason to even be playing the Skull Servants. Uh, this card's name becomes Skull Servant while in the graveyard, due to each of the following effects of White Lord once per turn. If you have white, uh, if you have Skull Servant or King of the Skull Servants in your graveyard, you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard to then send cards from the top of our deck to the graveyard up to the number of Skull Servants and King of the Skull Servants in our graveyard. Meaning, uh, we can have a maximum of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so we have seven, but it doesn't say uh, different names. It just says different amounts. So we could technically. Or not technically, we could theoretically mill like quite a few cards depending on if we have gotten lucky or unlucky with our previous mills. But White Lord being able to mill so many cards is an incredibly good thing for this deck. It also does have that really good secondary effect where you can banish this card from your graveyard, target a skull, uh, skull Servant or King in the graveyard, and then special summon it just flat out. So, this card is really, really good, White Lord. They really tried their darndest to make Skull Servant good, but instead they just gave us a better extender for this Skull Servant adjacent deck. We are on a triple White Baking. This main card's name becomes Skull Servant while in the graveyard. Keep a level 3 or lower zombie monster. You control the destroyed battle or card effect. You can discard this card instead. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add two monsters with different names from your deck to your hand, except for White Baking, and then uh, that are either Skull Servant or Mention It and then discard one card for the effect. Uh, discarding for effect at the very end, really strong, especially paired with the tier limits, being able to trigger those, great. Uh, this card adds from deck to hand White Lord, so we want to kind of max out on these as much as possible. Uh, this will also trigger if it's milled from like deck to graveyard, so do keep that in mind, which is why there's so much positive synergy with the whites and the uh, tier limits and light swarms. Next, we are on Triple White Prince. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send one Skull Servant and one Lady in White from your hand in our deck to the graveyard. You can banish two Skull Servants and this card from your graveyard, special you summon one King from your deck. This card's name becomes Skull Servant while in the graveyard. So this lets us uh, tutor Kings out of deck uh, for fairly low price because it also sets up its own cost to special Kings out of deck. So for every white prince, we can get one free uh, body on board, meaning King of the Skull Servants. So good stuff there. And just to get bodies in order to link climb is great. Let's talk about the aforementioned King of the Skull Servants. The original attack of this card is the combined number of King of the Skull Servants and Skull Servants in your graveyard times 1,000. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can banish one other King of the Skull Servants or one Skull Servant from your graveyard to special summon this card. Uh, floating effect, uh, bad. It's not a good floating effect. Um, 
Like, it doesn't even make sense with the design of the card, where the design of the card is like, I want to get really, really big, and then it only floats when it's destroyed by battle. Uh, quite strange. Uh, this card can sometimes just kill our opponents, especially with cards like White Lord, where it can, you can actually choose to just flat out special summon it without having to banish too many materials from your graveyard. King of the Skull Servants can surprisingly close out games a little bit more than they can't. And then our last two cards for the Skull Serpent portion is two copies of Lady in White because it is mentioned on White Prince, and so therefore we need to play at least two in the deck. So that's it for our main deck Skull Servants. Uh, we're playing about 16 of them, I believe, so we're not playing a few of them, but we are really not hoping to see any of them in our opener. The only Skull Servant we're like, really hoping to see is White Baking Milled, as well as of any other Skull Servant card also milled. But let's go into our Light Swarms. These cards are also going to help us mill a bunch more. We're on a Triple Light Swarm Dragon Lane. If we have a Light Swarm monster in our graveyard, we can special summon this card from our hand. If this card is special summon, we can send one Light Swarm card from our deck to the graveyard, except for Light Swarm Dragon Lane. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one dragon monster with 3,000 attack and 2,600 defense from your deck to your hand. You can lose each effect of Lightsworn Dragonling once per turn. Uh, so this is like the best starter in our deck. Uh, as long as you have a Lightsworn in graveyard, he basically does everything. Special summoning himself, uh, and then being able to dump any Lightsworn card in order to set up either a set Lightsworn Aegis, or to just go Minerva and go the full nine yards. So Dragonling is like really, really strong, and I'd look keep an eye out in the future for more decks involving him uh, out of me in the future. You're on one Raiden Hand of the Light Sworn on Ignition on field. You can mill two cards, and then uh, at the very end of the turn, you can also mill two cards. But the main thing is he's a level four tuner. Uh, we can bring it back from the graveyard with cards like Cross Sheep. So even if we just straight up mill him, uh, we can still gain access to those extra two mills that are attached to his body, so quite nice. We're on Double Weiss, Lightsworn Archfiend. This one's new. We can place one other Lightsworn card from our hand on top of the deck, special summon this card from our hand. Then we can mill the top two cards of our deck to the graveyard. This means our bricks with uh, Wolf or Felis have uh, gotten a lot better, where we aren't necessarily, like, just losing if we open like wolf and like another light sword like weiss uh it actually means that we can go into minerva because then we stack the wolf mill the wolf with the weiss special summon the weiss and then oh look level four tuner level four non-tuner like an eight so weiss is an incredibly strong card but however since this isn't a pure tier strategy i'm only really considering running two of them in this list Next, we are on Double Felis Lightsworn Archer. We're playing two just in case we mill it off of a spell card effect because that's not impossible. Felis has a little bit of a stranger effect compared to like Wolf. It says when it's milled by a monster effect, um, you can special summon it and then you can you can also tribute it on field to target a monster opponent controls and pop it and then mill three. Um, not necessarily the effect that we're necessarily going to go for. However, it can come up in a pinch if we're going second. Uh, it is mostly here to be a level 4 tuner uh, that can special summon itself when sent to graveyard. Uh, pairs really well with uh, Dragon Link since it's a non-tuner, so it makes free Minerva. Uh, and it is quite relevant in this list just because um, of the frequency that we need tuners just to be able to try and access Minerva. Um, because even if we send out something like Weiss, we need a non-tuner like Wolf. So we still will need access to Felis, and also being able to just grab it for extenders, either to make rank fours or to like link it off, is really really strong too. Uh, very similar to Felis, we have Triple Wolf. Uh, Wolf is um, a little bit less restrictive, where if it's just sent to the graveyard by a card effect, we can immediately special summon it. It's not we can, we have to. Uh, so we can uh, lock ourselves out of wolves if we run out of monster zones, which is an issue of the deck where we run out of monster zones. So it makes it so we have to play a little bit smarter, which isn't the worst. And then lastly, we're on one punishment dragon. Uh, cannot be normal summon or set, must be a special summon for a hand by uh, possessing four more banished light sworn monsters with different names. Once per turn, quick effect, you can pay 1,000 life points, shuffle in the decks all cards and graveyards and all face up banished cards except for light sworn monsters. 
Once per turn, if your Light Swarm Monster's effect is activated, send the top four cards of your deck to the graveyard. Uh, this card is really strong. It's a quick effect uh, graveyard nuke, functionally. Um, it's also the card that we can just search to our, from our deck to our hand if we send Dragon Link to the graveyard or if it gets milled. Uh, one downside is we don't want this card to get milled because then we really don't have a way to get it back. Um, so there's that little trade off there for us. Uh, funny enough, uh, this card is money. Like this card is just like unironically money. It's 171, 147. This card is like actually 30 bucks. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so yeah, we are just playing the one punishment dragon. And then onto our tier limits. Oh, sorry. Let's go into the Light Swarm Spell Traps first. Run Triple Charge of the Light Brigade. We can send the top three cards of our deck to the graveyard for cost to add one level four lower Light Swarm monster from our deck to our graveyard. Uh, not once per turn. That's incredible. So we're playing all three copies. And then we're playing one copy of Light Swarm Aegis. For face up cards, your opponent controls up to the number of Light Swarm monsters we control and they get their effects until the end of the turn. And if this card was sent to the deck to the graveyard, you can set this card. You can each effect of Light Swarm Aegis once per turn. So this is just a card that can set itself if it's milled, uh, which is pretty key now. Uh, and it can be uh, an Omni Negate if we end with Light Swarms on board. Not guaranteed, but not impossible either. And then for our last little mini engine of the deck, we're playing uh, Tier Laments and then something a little spit spicy. We're playing a Triple Rhino Heart on normal, especially we can send a Tier Limit monster from our deck to our graveyard, except for Rhino Heart. And if the Rhino Heart itself is sent to the graveyard by card effect, we can Special summoner from our hand, but uh, for the effect, we need to send a tier limit card from our hand to the graveyard, and then Rhino Heart's banished when he leaves the field. So all the tier limits, they will all trigger if they're sent to the graveyard for a card effect, and so Rhino Heart will then therefore trigger any subsequent tiers that you decide to discard your card effect for his card, uh, which is also why I mentioned previously why White Baking is so good, because he also just makes you discard at the very end of the, of the card effect. We are on a triple tier element cash tier. During the main phase, we expect to get special summon this card from our hand, and if you do banish one cash tier or one tier element card from our hand or graveyard, if this card is normal or special, we can send the top four of your player's deck to the graveyard, always gonna be us. If this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect, we can send the top two cards of our deck to the graveyard. So if we mill it, it's a little bit extra mill. If we draw it, we can special summon it, mill some more, and it's an extender. So good stuff all around from tier element cash, so we wanna be playing three copies of it. We're on one copy of Tier Limit Shiren. During our main phase, we can special from our hand, and if we do send one monster from our hand to the graveyard, that's uh, effect. And then mill three cards. And then if all the if these uh, three Tier Limits I'm about to mention, if these cards are sent to the graveyard by a card effect, we can fusion summon a fusion monster from our extra deck by using cards from our hand, field, and graveyard, including the Tier Limit, by putting them at the bottom of our deck. Um, so all the Tier Limits, all these three Tier Limits do that. And that's why they're so incredibly strong, because they're able to basically fusion summon monsters without actually really getting rid of material, because you're just using stuff in Graveyard, and you're even putting it back into your deck or extra deck, which is nice. Uh, Havness has the effect in hand if your opponent activates a monster effect on field. You can special it from your hand and make uh, and then mill three cards. And then Merle says if it's normal or special summon, that we get to mill three cards. So... All three of these are really good, but we mostly want to be seeing them just as mills, and we don't really want to be seeing them in our opening hand, unless we're talking about Shiren specifically. And then our last two tier limit adjacent main deck cards that aren't exactly tier spell traps or terraforming is a double King of the Swamp. Uh, this card can just be any, uh, be used as any fusion material. So we can summon cards like Rory Kalos, where our uh, Kit Kalos is banned. If we don't have a Rhino Heart, we can use it as a Rhino Heart. And then we can even use it as a card like Graffa for um, the uh, Dark World Fusion. So, has a very large multitude of uses. And also, if we draw it in a per turn, we can discard it to grab a Polymerization from deck to hand, which we can use to make something like Mud Dragon of the Swamp, if it seems like we break a little bit, to try and get cards out of our hand. We're playing a little bit more Link heavy in this build, uh, since we have a little bit more dark Link material able to uh, available to us. We are playing the Phantom Knights, one Cloak, one Boots, one Shade Brigadine, and two Fog Blade. A uh, five card main deck engine with one copy of Rusty Bardish and the extra. 
These guys are just here as extra extenders, extra pieces of interaction with Fog Blade. Shade Brigadine being an extra uh, level 4 body. And since we can banish a lot of our cards from our graveyard, like our Tier Limit Celiac, we can banish with our Tier Cash if we end up milling it. Trivi Karma, we banish with its own effect if we end up milling it. Uh, Light Sword Aegis resets itself if we mill it. So the only cards that can really that are realistically gonna stay in graveyard is if we milled our own Shade Brigadine, because Fog Blade can also bring, banish itself to bring something back from graveyard. So all of our traps can empty themselves or get do something else to empty it out of our graveyard to make Shade Brigadine live. Uh, Ancient Cloak lets us banish it from the graveyard to add one the Phantom Knight card from our deck to our hand, being either Shade Brigadine or Silent Food. Silent Food says if we control another Phantom Knight, we can special summon it from our hand, and then if it's in our graveyard, we can banish it from our graveyard to add one Phantom Knight spell trap from our deck to our hand, being either again the Shade Brigadine or one of the two Fog Blades. The rest of our tier cards were on one Foolish Burial. Uh, it's consent any cards are not necessarily tier specific, however, more likely than not, this is going to be used as a tier limit card from deck to graveyard. Or if we have like a Dragonling and like no way to get a Light Sword in graveyard, this is going to be something like something similar to Raiden or something like that. We are on one Poly, like, as I mentioned with King of the Skull Servants, one Terraforming in order to find Perliano. We're on uh, triple copies of Tier Scream. If a monster is normal or special summoning, we control a Tier monster. We can mill the top three cards of our deck to the graveyard, and then our rest of our turn, monsters our opponent controls lose 500 attack. Then if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, we can add one Tier Limit Trap from our deck to our hand. Um, we're playing so many copies of this because it mills extra cards, uh, but do keep in mind it won't trigger stuff like Felis. Same with uh, Charge of the Light Brigade, it won't trigger Felis. However, if this card is milled itself, we can add a Tier Limit Sullyak from our deck to our hand, which is probably one of the best traps we can add, being um, dual interaction, both sending a Tier Limit from field to graveyard, as well as negating a monster card. We are on one to Primeval Planet Perliano. If it's activated, we can add a Tier Limit monster or Vsauce from deck to hand. A Fusion Monsters and Tier Limits we control, gain 500 attack. The tier limit monster you control in our, in our graveyard is shuffled into the deck. We can target the card on field and pop it. Uh, Perliano is great. That overall buff is fantastic, especially paired with that Scream debuff, putting about a 1,000 attack gap in between our monsters and our opponent's monsters is big. And then lastly, we are on uh, one Trivic Karma. It's just a card we can banish from our graveyard to add a card that mentions uh, Esau Starfrost. Uh, we can add the Perliana with this, we can add Scream, we can add Saliac, they all mention Vsauce, Starfrost. So this basically lets us add any of our spell traps from deck to hand if need be. Uh, I, I already went over Saliac's effect, but I'm just going to go over its actual effect. If you control a tier limit monster or Vsauce, Starfrost, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls, negates effects, and then send one monster you control to the graveyard. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add one tier limit monster from your deck to your hand. So milling this is optimal. We really want to be milling this because it basically lets us tutor for any one of our tier limits, which makes our combo that much stronger. Um, but that is our full main deck, full solid uh, 60 cards. Now let's go to the extra. In our extra, we're on one Relinquished Anima for our Skull Servants. One Crossy for a fusion based deck and bringing stuff back really helps with the flame climbing. We're on one IP Mascarena, one Nightmare Unicorn. One Phantomite of Rusty Barty, since we're on such uh, so many dark-focused uh, cards. One Apollosa, Bow of the Goddess, as a payoff for Link Climbing. That's it for our links. None of our cards really dark lock us, so we can always pretty much access the Underworld. I mean, the Apollosa, not Underworld Goddess. I apologize. For Xyz, we're on Abyss Dweller, uh, Time Thief Rejewer, and Minerva the Exalted Lightsworn. Uh, these three cards are very strong. Uh, Abyss Dweller and Time Thief Redo are really good at being end board pieces. Abyss Dweller uh, even being able to gain attack if made with Rhino Heart. While Time Thief Redoer has the niche little effect where it actually detaches its materials for effect. So it will trigger stuff like Tier Element Shiren or Tier Element Rhino Heart that are underneath of it. Uh, especially on our opponent's turn, that's great. Um, and then Minerva lets us mill additional cards on top of whatever we have already milled. Uh, we're also on one copy of the Zombie Vampire. Uh, we can make this using our Minerva plus our Punishment Dragon, which is searchable on our way to Minerva. 
So Minerva sets it up when you use the mill effect by banishing tier limits from our graveyard. Uh, I'm not sure how much lights were, but let me read Minerva first just so you have a better understanding. Minerva is a Synchro 8 and needs a light, a tuner and a non-tuner monster. Light Sword monsters you control cannot be banished by card effects. You can only use each of the following effects of Minerva, Athenian Light Sword once per turn. If this card is Synchro 7, you can send Light Sword monsters with different types from your deck to your graveyard up to the number of Light Sword monsters uses this card's material. And you can banish up to four Light Sword monsters from your graveyard to send that many cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. So you remember that number that Punishment Dragon mentioned? It was four. Um, so we can very easily set up uh, something like Dragonling, Felis, and then the two that we mill, mill with Minerva being Weiss and Wolf. We can easily set that up to be like a resource loop, as well as at the very end of the process, going Minerva, Banish Four, Special Punishment Dragon, and then overlaying Minerva and the Punishment Dragon for a card like the Zombie Vampire. Where if we can uh, we can attach a material from it, and then each player mills the top four of our of uh, the decks and then sends it to the graveyard. Then if any monsters were milled, we can special summon one of those monsters to our field, uh, basically turning both of them into an extra extender, plus getting an like basically a double up on that Minerva mill four effect. So great stuff. And then lastly for our fusions. We're on one Mud Dragon of the Swamp. It's a four that's a water that we can make by using uh, like random stuff for the most part. One Tier Limit Ruk Rukulos. Uh, this one negates special su like effects that would special summon monsters. Uh, and it also floats into itself from the graveyard, which is really strong. Tier Limit Kaleido Heart. When a card is shuffled, um, a monster card is sent to, our, uh, sent to our graveyard by a card effect while this card is on field of an aqua specifically I meant. We can target one card our opponent controls and shuffle it into the deck. If this card is sent to graveyard by card effect, we can special summon this card, and if we do send one tier limit card from our deck to our graveyard. Keep in mind, that doesn't say tier limit monster, it says tier limit card. Uh, so Kaleido Heart is a really good piece of this deck, especially if we already have Sullyk on field, and we can just play Kaleido Heart Control. And our last card in the deck is going to be Graffa, Dragon Lord, Overlord of the Dark World. When your opponent activates a monster effect or a normal spell trap card while you have cards in your hand, quick effect you can activate this effect. The activated effect becomes your opponent discards a card. Uh, your opponent discards one card. You can use this effect of Graffa, Dragon Lord, Overlord of Dark World, and once per turn. And if this fusion summon card and its owner's uh, control leaves the field because of opponent's card, you can special summon one of your cards that we're not playing. Uh, this card is big, it's 32, the biggest individual monster in our deck, not counting Apollos, because Apollos can get that large too. Uh, or not counting the Kaleido Heart, or any of the things with any of the buffs from the deck. Uh, Graph is just a way to get an extra negate, we can play around Nibiru with it, but we can also play around Nibiru with cards like Apollosa. But that's going to be about it for the deck profile, I really like this deck, I think um, it is quite strong. His high-end hands are really incredibly something else. However, sometimes you do just uh, brick. Uh, and, like, I don't think that's an issue with the tier limits or the light swords. Sure, they can help uh, with the bricking process. However, the light swords now have cards to help them unbrick themselves. The process of, um, I mean, the main issue with bricking now is you're playing 16 cards that don't do anything on normal summon, don't special summon themselves from hand or anything. They're more like supplemental things to help the game plan get going uh, later in the turn, not earlier in the turn. You still need to draw like some sort of play starter. So I think this deck is neat. I think this is probably the most competent way that Skull Servant is available to the players. However, I do think that the deck is stronger without the skull servants than it is with them. Thank you all so, so much for watching, if you still are, and I'll be seeing you all later. Bye-bye! Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you wanted to talk to more Yu-Gi-Oh! players like yourself, I would highly recommend checking out our Discord server. Link is going to be in the description, as well as the QR code on screen. We do talk somewhat frequently about Yu-Gi-Oh! and the current meta, so I would really enjoy to see you there. As well as we do recently now have channel memberships available on our YouTube channel. 
where we have three different tiers. We have Super Supporter at $2 a month, where you get loyalty badges, emojis, guaranteed comment responses, a shout out at the end of every video, as well as access to the members only Discord channel, where you get early sneak peeks at future videos. There is the Giga Supporter at $5 a month, where you have early access to all new videos about a day or two before they go up, as well as all the previous offers. And for $15 a month, we do have our final tier, which is going to be Femboy Fanatic. You get a guaranteed customized video every single month, as well as one hour of my time. Could be for anything you'd like. You want a duel? Absolutely. You want me to help build the deck? Absolutely. You want to play some Hell Divers? Sure. I'll do anything for an hour once a month. But supporting does help me out quite a lot, and it does help me produce all of these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Bye-bye.